What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. Since I've done a few videos lately on AI and Python, I wanted to shift and show you in this video how to set up a Python environment for all things data, ranging from reading a CSV to plotting charts to actual machine learning. Most of us, we use Python for web development or scripting or automation, something like that. But if you happen to be exploring some data with Python and using tools like Pandas or Matplotlib, then there's a really nice setup that you can utilize to give you all the things you need in one place. And I'm going to show you that now. So here's what we're going to set up. We're going to use Miniconda as the installer for our Conda environments. Now, Miniconda is a lightweight version of Anaconda, which is a platform that data scientists and analysts and machine learning engineers use for packaging environment management across operating systems. Now, Anaconda is massive at like three gigabytes, over a thousand packages, and it's overkill for many of us. So we're going to use Miniconda, which is a lightweight version with only a few required packages, and then we can add packages as needed. And Miniconda allows you to install Miniconda environments to isolate and manage your packages and projects. And within that environment, we'll install Jupyter Notebooks, which will give you an interactive workspace. And then for any data analysis, you can install Pandas, NumPy, or Matplotlib. And if you want to do any machine learning models, Modeling, you can install scikit-learn or TensorFlow. So let's start out with Miniconda. So just go to Google, type in Miniconda, and I see here installing Miniconda. I'll click that. I'm on a Mac OS, so let me go to that tab. And number one is download the installer. And I'm on an Apple M1, so I'm gonna choose the package download. Once I'm done with that, I can run that package to install Miniconda on my Mac. And just follow the steps to install Miniconda. Once that's done, you should be able to open up your terminal and type in the conda command and you should get that. You should also see this base word here to the left of your terminal prompt. Base actually tells you what environment you're in, and base is the default. So this is the default environment. When we create a new environment, this will change. I'll show you that in a minute. And by the way, if this gets on your nerves and you don't like seeing base all the time, there is a command you can use to hide it. I'll put a link below to that. So I'm gonna go into a folder. So I have a repos folder. I'm gonna make a new directory called Python data, and I'll CD into Python data. And I want to create a new conda environment. So to do that, I do conda create. Let me just fill in this auto suggest. So this prefix argument, if you look up that command, this prefix argument is the full path to the environment. So for me, I just want it to be a folder called env in this Python data folder. And then what packages do I want to install with this new environment? So I want the pandas package, numpy, matplotlib, scikit-learn, and Jupyter for Jupyter notebooks. And then later, if you want to add a new one, just do conda install whatever the package is. It's kind of like pip. So let's create the new environment. And it lists all of the packages that it's going to install. So that's the packages I told it to, plus the supporting packages. So proceed, yes. And it will create this environment and install all of my needed packages. This takes a little while, so I'll resume when this is done. All right, that's done. So if I actually look in my folder, my Python data folder, I have a new folder called env. If I open that up, there's all the stuff related to my environment. So to activate this environment, right now I'm in the default environment, which is base. But to activate this environment, in order to use it, I just run this command, conda activate. And then the full path to this env folder. So if I grab this and paste it in, I can activate my environment. And you know this because instead of base, I have the full path to my environment. That means it's activated. So now all of my packages are there to use. I can actually do Jupyter Notebook. I can run this command and it opens up a local host version of Jupyter Notebooks. I can go to new and create a new notebook. The kernel will be Python 3 and I have a brand new Jupyter Notebook. Let me make this bigger. Now this Jupyter Notebook is gonna be your interactive workspace. You can run everything within this notebook. So here I can change this to Markdown and I can say developer survey ages, shift enter, and I downloaded a CSV of the 2023 Stack Overflow Developer Survey. Let's plot a chart of all the different ages that participated in this survey. So because I installed all of those packages, pandas, scikit-learn, etc., I could just import them here into my workspace. So import pandas as PD, run that. And by the way, side note, if you're looking for a machine learning course and you're not sure where to start, I'd 100% recommend this course that I'm currently taking on Zero to Mastery called Complete Machine Learning in Data Science. Some of the other routes you go, you gotta start out with calculus and statistics and all that, which is important. But if you're a programmer and you just wanna dive right in with Python and learn about different machine learning models, working with large data sets with pandas, plotting with matplotlib, and actually modeling data, running machine learning algorithms with scikit-learn, and all of that, then I'd 100% recommend this. If you need to go back and study some math, you can always do that. But for a good overview of how all of this stuff works, 
this has been a real eye opener to me. And what's neat is they currently still have a Black Friday sale going on where you can get 20% off an annual membership. In addition, they have a giveaway going on where you can win an M3 MacBook Pro. If you're not familiar with this site, they have pretty much every course you could imagine to mastering the coding interview, TensorFlow certification course, React, Go, Rust, all of that. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that because I had been looking for a course like this and I found this one to be a good one. I'll put a link to this page below. Then I can create a data frame. So df equals pd dot read CSV. Then I'll need my CSV file, which I haven't imported. So I can go back to that main screen, go to upload, grab this CSV document. And now that's available for me to use. So I can just say sur tab and there's my CSV. So create that data frame. Now df hid to get the first five rows. And here's my survey. So there's age, employment, remote work, coding activities, all of this information. I just want to find out the count of all the different ages. To do that, I can do df dot, what column do I want? Age, df dot age dot value counts, which is a pandas method dot plot and kind equals bar. Now, if I run this, I'll get a bar graph of those ages. There we have it. So there was actually 90,000 people in this survey. I deleted all but like 800 so I could speed things up a little bit. But anyway, the point here is that you can create a whole notebook of everything you're doing with your data. It's interactive. Like I can come down here and do, let's create a Python function, def, and let's call it uh, times two. Put an X here and just say return X times two. Now, if I ever need that function in this workbook, I can just, let's do a print times two, how about 15? Run that and I get 30. So anything you wanna do Python, you can do in this workbook. And since you created this Conda environment, you can run it all in this isolated space with all of the packages you need. If I need to pass this on to somebody else, I can do so. Now to end this Jupyter Notebook and deactivate my environment, I just go back to my terminal and you'll see that everything's running here. I can do a control C to shut down the Jupyter server. And to deactivate my environment, you just do Conda deactivate and I'm back out of my project. So if you have any data projects you're doing with Python and you want all of these packages in one isolated place, consider using this setup. It's very popular with data scientists, analysts, and people in that field. Hope you found this helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.